Hey guys, uh, there seems to be a problem with the uh, blower in this uh, air handler here. Uh, when I turned on the heat for the first time this season, it worked properly for a few minutes, and then there was sort of a, a rumbling noise, and the blower stopped very quickly, and the thermostat reported an error code to do with the uh, motor being locked rotor. And if we turn it, it's a little bit hard to turn. It feels like there's a short circuit somewhere. We'll have to pull the uh, motor out and see what's going on. Okay, that was easy enough to get out. Um, the symptoms were when I when the motor tried to spin up, it would spin slowly for a second or so. It would try to accelerate, and then it would give up. So I don't think the power stage is completely blown. I'm almost thinking it might be the coils, but uh, we'll find out soon. Here's the inverter module pulled off the motor. Um, all potted. Looks like they're using uh, integrated MOSFET or IGBT module. Um, Filter caps. This is passive uh, PFC or no PFC at all. Sorry. Uh, see, there's a rectifier mounted a little heatsink, EMI filter, and all the interesting stuffs under potting. Good for reliability, but not good for servicing. And the motor still has the uh, cogging when unplugged, so that tells me that it, there's one of the coils has short-circuited or the wiring somewhere. Here's the motor apart. Um, the rotor has five permanent magnets on it. Each one has uh, two poles, one there, one there. And the stator has uh, 12 poles. It's interesting that they have, these are, uh, the poles, the pole pieces are flat on the top. I think they would have, they would have expected them to curve them to match the rotor. There must be some uh, reason they did it that way. I noticed some slightly discolored wire uh, right here. Although, if there was a short causing that wire to discolor, I would expect the coils to discolor as well, because that full current would have to flow through the coils. We're not seeing that, so I'm d I don't think that uh, discoloration is due to a short. I think what I'll do to uh, try to figure out where the short is, is put this back together, spin it with a drill, and look at it with a thermal image camera, and the coil that has the short should heat up, so we can d identify which coil is the problem. And then if it's just one coil, it shouldn't be too difficult to remove the wire and rewind it if I can find the, the uh, same gauge of wire. We're ready to spin this now. We've got the thermal camera looking at it. Uh, let's see what this does. Okay, definitely these these two uh, coils there and these two coils here are heating up. And because it's two separate sets of coils heating up, it's not a short uh, inside one of the coils because that would heat up only uh, one coil. That's a good sign. That means we won't have to uh, rewind the whole thing. It's just some problem with the uh, wiring running around the outside, which is relatively easy to access. Okay, I think I've traced the wiring out on this. Um, these two coil pairs uh, are the ones that are heating up, as well as um, these two. And those are actually both the wires from both of those go to the uh, Y point here. So those are from different phases, and the wires from these coils run around here and cross over the wires from these coils right at uh, this point around here. So prodding around a little bit, I found this exact point, when you push on it, causes the short. So that's probably where the problem is. You see, somehow um, stop this from shorting out. So I'm thinking of just wedging something between the wires and uh, putting a bit of epoxy in so they don't contact each other. If you look right uh, from here where I'm pointing, I think you can see the break in the wire insulation. Okay, that's all glued up now. Now we just have to uh, probably apply some varnish around everything to stop the wires from uh, rubbing against each other. And put it back together and test it out. That's all back together now and it spins freely. Uh, let's just hook this up to the scope and see what the waveforms are like on this motor. That's a very nice sine wave of about 20 volts RMS, even just from spinning it by hand. If you can ever get some scrap uh, motors like this, these would probably be pretty good as uh, wind turbine generators. 
Let's get this back in the furnace and uh, see if it works. Okay, let's see what this does now. Take a few seconds for it to uh, boot up and receive the command from the thermostat to turn the fan on. Oh, there it goes. Okay, it looks like we still have a problem of short somewhere in here. So this time I'm just going to cut the wire around here and uh, reroute it far away from the short. Okay, it turns out these wires were not the, uh, or this wire was not the actual short, but after digging around more, this wire, you can clearly see, hopefully. This one has a break in the insulation. Yes, yeah, so hopefully now that we've lifted that out, that will solve the problem. I just have to reconnect this back up again. It's been running for a while now, it seems to be fixed. Um, I'm not sure if I like these uh, Emerson brand motors because that was, this failure is, seems to be due to just poor quality construction. Anyway, hope you like this video. Thanks for watching. Oh, and I also have something interesting for review soon.